So on March 15th, the first two seasons of the El Rey Network Supernatural Wrestling Hybrid Show, Lucha Underground, premiered on Netflix, and I am extremely happy and nervous about this. Yes. I have spent a remarkable amount of time right here on the goddamn podcast hyping this goddamn show to people. I quickly fell in love with the show, and from there onwards, I essentially became a disciple. Yes, you did. Of Lucha, and now that the show is readily available on Netflix, the audience for Lucha Underground is much, 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 much bigger, and so now I'm worried, uh, you know, that will other people love the show as I love it? Will the rest of America fall for these fucking Mexican guys in masks? Will white America embrace Lucha Libre? These are all questions. I like to think that this right here, here and now, with Lucha Underground premiering on Netflix, that this could very well be a turning point for Lucha Underground. Mm -hmm. Lucha is constantly called the next big thing and the, the, the best wrestling show on television. But it just doesn't have an audience. Not a lot of people get the L Ray Network. I'm pretty sure even Robert Rodriguez doesn't get the fucking L Ray Network, and it's his goddamn network. So, <laughs> so having Lucha Underground be on Netflix is big for Lucha Underground, and this could really be a turning point for them. So I'm excited. Mm -hmm. It's a great show. It's got a rich mythology. It's got if, an if you movie. if you watch wrestling. You know, regardless of, of who you watch, you have no excuse not to watch Underground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, the only hindrance to Lucha Underground has been that hardly anyone has the fucking uh, Ray Network. So, yeah, I can't stress enough how yeah. important Lucha Underground on Netflix is for the future of the show. Very important. But Lucha Underground is a bit of a hard sell. It, yeah. Admit it admittedly it's lucha libre it's wrestling it's ancient warring warring tribes and colorful characters and supernatural Uzi what's it it's a bit of a tough sell uh -huh. it's a bit of a tough sell. especially like how are you gonna sell uh mexican wrestling in poughkeepsie you know and that is where i come in uh, Reverend Steve, Lucha Underground lover, here to help guide the uninitiated through the world of Lucha Underground. There are a few things that you should keep in mind before and during your first blind attempt to binge watch my Lucha. I have five pointers here that will help you through the show. I call it The Gringo's Guide to Lucha Underground. Good. Really proud of that. Five tips for all of you gringos out there before watching Lucha Underground. Tip number one. These are all supremely important. I cannot stress this enough. Number one. Lucha Underground is not professional wrestling. No. Do not go... It's not wrestling. It's just not wrestling. Mm -hmm. You can't just get ring of honor or tna impact or smackdown or wcw and compare it to lucha underground so do not go into lucha underground thinking you're gonna see any of those things okay yeah this isn't ring of honor this isn't ecw this isn't really real wrestling that's from regular show by the way lucha underground is not a wrestling show it is at its core a supernatural Latin-themed grindhouse movie that's been condensed into a television format. If anything, <laughs> if anything, if the El Rey Network TV show, um, what's the name of that goddamn show? Uh, movie, Full Tilt Boogie, uh, the uh, Gecko Brothers. Yes, Full Tilt Boogie was the uh, documentary. Yeah, about Dust Till Dawn. Dust Till Dawn. Essentially, this is the TV show from Dust Till Dawn, but with wrestling. Yeah, this is Lucha Underground isn't a wrestling show; it's a TV show that features wrestling. That is super important to remember. Mm -hmm. So don't go into this expecting the next WWE. It's like comparing apples and Dodge Stratuses. And it's and it's produced, you know which you're not used to seeing wrestling shows 
produced. You know, there are specific camera angles and lighting setups. Yeah. You know? One of the one of the tiny little differences that I like is the fact that something can happen backstage. Something can happen in the dressing room. Something can happen outside in the parking lot. Something can happen in the basement during a show. Mm-hmm. And the color commentators don't know because why would they know yeah and that's such a great difference plot wise Mm -hmm. because like something's backstage on wwe and then suddenly there's uh your announce team who know exactly what happened yeah there's a i love the fact that you know as an audience member you're watching this and you know plot things that fucking Matt Stryker and Vampiro don't know about. That's a good, that's just the tiniest little difference, but it means a lot. So, uh, number two, tip number two for watching Lucha Underground. Temporary WWE choking. Follow me into this one, okay? Okay. Lucha Underground knows fully well that unless you're a big fan of AAA wrestling in Mexico, um, and chances are you know Jack Squad about 90% of the Lucha Underground roster. So, in the beginning of Lucha Underground, the first six episodes, the first eight episodes, the first four episodes, the first 12 episodes, while they slowly build their own characters and yes. their backstory and motivation, they will also try and keep you interested by shoving every former WWE wrestler they have in the roster down your fucking throat. <laughs> so a lot of... So expect a lot of Chavo Guerrero. Expect a lot of funny moves of wrestle for years and be as John You know why they call him John You're breaking up a bit. A, uh, a, a, a lot of... Expect a lot of Johnny Mundo who wrestled for years in the WWE as John Morrison. You know yes. why they called him John Morrison? Because he's the dude who looked like Jim Morrison. Yeah, he and like he came Jim. out in the fucking fur and yeah, everything. Yeah. He looked like Jim Morrison if Jim Morrison just like maybe in at, at like the age at age nineteen just said, you know what? Fuck music. I'm just gonna do steroids. Yeah. <laughs> Not that Johnny Mundo does steroids. He does parkour and he's insane with it. But uh, So expect a lot of Chavo. Expect a lot of Johnny Mundo. Expect a lot of former NWO member and Viva La Raza screamer Conan. Okay. Also, Vampiro is around too. I, uh, give him a chance though. I never fucking liked Vampiro <laughs> yeah. in WCW. But give him a chance because I'm I'm in season three and I love this man now. He <laughs> he goes through, he goes through a lot during Lucha to Underground. Yeah, uh, a lot of familiar or vaguely familiar faces are shoved down your goddamn throat. But fear not because Lucha to Underground does a really good job of building up their guys. So soon you'll know a lot about <laughs> Mil Muertes and the Lick of Death, which is a thing in its throat, and my whole family has talked about it at length. Yeah. You'll know Pentagon Jr. and uh, Seno Miedo. Uh, How do you do that? You do the, the OK sign with your fingers, and then you move it down so that it's an M. Zero, zero, Miedo. Which means fear. Zero fear. Zero, zero, miedo. I am horrible at Spanish. And remember that uh, 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 Lucha Underground star uh, Prince Puma is Ricochet. Yes. Ricochet is from some homework here on the show. Uh, uh, Ricochet versus Will Osprey was our former. Pope on film homework and one of the greatest or silliest matches of all time. In Lucha Underground, he's Prince Puma. He's the goddamn best. He's fucking amazing. Yeah. yeah. Also, recently started talking a lot of the Lucha Underground guys on Instagram. He's also married and has a kid. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. He's married and he has a kid. It's, it's adorable. 
So anyway, um, let's go to. But it also has. Number- but it also just has this great Mexican soap opera feel to it. Oh yeah. You know, like yeah. if Mexican soap opera ever got the production value of like Dynasty or Dallas or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then they wrestle. <laughs> yeah. That would make uh, telenovelas a lot more exciting to watch. Yeah. So it's it's a fun it's a fun show. You know, I just gotta learn the characters and stuff. Yeah. You know. It just takes a while. The first match is the first match in the first episode is horrible. <laughs> the second match is okay. The third match the main event of the first mat of the first episode that's really the money and that's that's a good that's a good uh look at things going forward yeah so on three number three mythology lucha underground takes a while to set up its own mythology and its own backstory and the characters and their motivation and yada 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 but after about four or six or eight episodes you will definitely start building up some really good questions yeah what is the key around Dario Cueto's neck. What is being kept in the basement? Is the thing being kept in the basement even human? What the hell is <laughs> Katrina's deal? Does she have some fucking powers or is she just creepy as hell? Give it time is what I'm saying. You gotta yeah. give it time. Eventually you're gonna have some really questions. I guarantee you all of those questions that I just listed they have answers. They come pretty soon. I'm in season three, and I have such bigger questions now. Yeah! <laughs> bigger questions. Now, I, I forgot to look. How long is an episode? Because it seems to have gone pretty quick. Each episode, the show is an hour long. So on Netflix, each episode is like 46, 47 minutes long. Yeah. Yeah. But that first season has like 40 episodes, 40 goddamn episodes. They did. The second season was shorter. So, yeah, no, it, this is an, an insane amount of episodes that, that have dropped on Netflix. So, and, and goddamn, uh, see, I, I, I don't know their names or anything yet, but the boss, Dar- Dario Cueto. Yes. Oh my God, I I I, I, I love him. I, I I just love to hate him. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And he's that's one of the- he's so he's so sleazy looking. You know. Yeah. And again, this what a shows great you- bad guy. And again, this shows you the fact that Lucha Underground isn't professional wrestling; it's a television show. He is an actor. He was in Jack and Jill with fucking uh, Adam Sandler. Yeah. And he still acts. He was in uh, an episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia last season. Oh, yeah. my God. He, he, was a, he played a doctor who was looking after uh, Danny DeVito. Like, I'm oh, watching yeah. the episode, and I'm like, this is a funny episode. I like the fact that it's in the first person. It's in Frank's point of view. Yeah. And I think it's pretty funny. Like you see a day in the life of Frank of Danny DeVito, and it's pretty funny. And oh man, now he passed out. He's wake, he's waking up in the hospital. Holy shit, that's Dario Cueto! That's Dario Cueto! <laughs> Every fucking Dario Cueto's on his own side of here. And I just love the fact that like, oh, we could get a wrestler. We could get some sort of wrestling guy to come in here and play this part. Or you know what? We could just get a fucking actor. It's a TV show, and they yeah. got an actor. And he's acting in this part, and it's great because he does a great fucking job. He's a goddamn actor, and he's mm-hmm. acting this role. And it, that's that's one thing you won't see in Lucha Underground. They're not going to get some actor to play a manager. Yeah, but w- at the same time, but at the same time, if you sat back and said, "Okay, now we have Vince McMahon," <laughs> and frankly, Eric Bischoff was a Vince McMahon knockoff. Yeah, you know, you have you have this type, you have this type of main guy. Now fictionalize that, not that it's really not fiction already, but fictionalize it for a show, and that's exactly what you got with this view. Yeah, 
Yeah. You know, so so all the kinds of things that you kind of like to hate about Vince McMahon. Yeah. They've they've like gone to eleven. <laughs> you know, they've taken it to to the dramatic conclusion. Yeah. You know, I really want to see him in a Manos robe. <laughs> I want a Manos robe. Natasha needs to work on that. So, because because t- right off the bat we can easily see him coming. Oh, some kind of black magician. I, I, he would look great behind an altar. Oh yeah, no, because he's just that dark character. <clears throat> yeah. So, tip number four: color commentary. Now, yeah. your two color commentators are. Former WWE wrestler and former WWE commentary commentaryist co- commentator commentarier Matt Stryker and brooding WCW wrestler Vampiro. Now yeah. let's go. Let now now let's jump a bit into the future. Okay. Yeah. Season one is a very long season. There's 40 episodes, and and they took like a bit of a break in there, like during the holidays. So it took. It took a really long time for them to get through the first season. By the end of season one, a major wrestling magazine, apparently there are still wrestling magazines, uh, did a uh, fan voting, and the fans voted pretty heavily that Matt Stryker was hands down the best commentator in professional wrestling today. Nice. And in the beginning... Season two, Matt Stryker and Vampiro are basically BFFs that really do love each other. Yeah. Like, they they grow to really love and care for each other. Also, do not turn this show into a drinking game. Do not take a shot every time Vampiro says brother, because after the second or third episode, you will be dead. <laughs> you will be dead. <laughs> And 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 after and, and in season two, you got to realize that there was a huge pause between season one and season two, where people like me were on their podcast freaking out because they weren't sure if there were going to be any more uh, Lucha Underground. So there was a huge period in time when Matt Stryker and Vampiro, who had just gotten to be BFFs on the show, weren't spending time with each other. So by the time they get back for season two, they're basically like. Like Emerald and Amber, they're like BFFs, and it's it's adorable. It's like what the best romance is on television, is what I'm saying. <laughs> what the best romance is on TV today? It's Sam and Diane. It's Sam and Diane. It's re- <laughs> yeah. By the time Matt Stryker arrives in the desert to save Vampiro at the beginning of season two, yeah, they are like they're like brothers who are in love with each other. But it takes a long ass time to get there. I'm rewatching Lucha Underground myself, and it's weird to see the like the first six, the first eight, the first ten episodes where they don't really know each other. These two guys don't really know each other, and it's weird. Uh, Matt Stryker has said that literally. The contract, he signed his contract seconds before they went on the air with the first, first episode. Mm-hmm. That it was it was that quick. It was that it was that last second. Like yeah. Matt Stryker was it was it, it was literally the last second before he they signed a contract for him. So he really does sort of jump into the deep end and and it, so give them time. It's really worth it. Eventually, they will become amazing color commentators. Yeah. It just gives them a while. You got to give them some time here. Do you know Matt Stryker's deal? I do not. It, they, there's a whole cracked article about it. I'm going to sort of paraphrase. But basically, Matt Stryker was an actual high school English teacher who dreamed of one day being a wrestler. So he would he would teach kids in the morning, and then at night, he would be taking these wrestling classes, and then during the weekends, he would go off and do these indie wrestling events all over the place, and then yeah. he would just drive back home and 
be an English teacher. And, he, you know, he'd come in and he'd have like a black eye or he'd, he'd have a broken nose, but he'd still be an English teacher. Yeah. He loved being an English teacher. It was a regular paycheck, but he also dreamed of being a professional wrestler. He loved the both of these things so much. Being a professional wrestler and also having a normal fucking job. Yeah. And when he was hired to be a wrestler for the WWE, he didn't tell his fucking high school. Oh my god! Yeah. What? So he... He kept teaching high school English and then would go off and be on Raw. Oh wow. And then he would go back and teach high school English and then travel to St. Louis to do a live event and then travel back to teach. And he was able to do this for a long ass time until eventually, you know, the high school was like, so is this you on the cover of this magazine beating a woman up with a steel chair? <laughs> We can't have you doing this. And he's like, okay, well, that's fine, because this was getting impossible anyway. I guess I'm just a wrestler now. Yeah. Yeah. But isn't that crazy? He would be, like, uh, getting beaten up by Triple H and being thrown through, uh, like, a, like, a, like a, a, the Spanish announce table and then just put on a shirt and a tie and go teach kids Shakespeare. <laughs> That's just fascinating to me. That's absolutely fascinating to me. I love the man for that. That's an incredible story. That is. Eleanor. Eleanor and Bella are here with me right now, and apparently all Eleanor wants to do is watch me do the podcast. She is staring at me so goddamn hard. She's going to bore a hole through my freaking head the way she's staring at me. Yeah, now, hi, Eleanor. Now. I know. It's called the podcast. It's weird. Uh, just thinking about him, though, so, just thinking about him, though, I mean, uh, there's a guy who will body slam you over the Oxford comma. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. This you is know? a learned man. This is a man. There, there, and there becomes a bit more serious. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think this is a promotion and we should run with it. <laughs> I appreciate professional wrestlers who have a safety net. Yeah. You know, a lot of these professional wrestlers, their entire life professional wrestling, and then when their body says, you can't do this anymore, they got to fucking nowhere else to go. That's yeah. why I like the fact that Kane, WWE's Kane, yeah. has not been on wrestling for a really long time because he wants to focus on his insurance business. Oh my god, I love it. I love that. Good for yeah. you, Kane. Yeah. Fucking good for you. The evil... Yeah, the evil red mask Kane oh has an insurance god. business. Good for him. I want to get I want to get insurance through that man. Yeah. Like really appreciate anyone who can give me insurance and also well, he's... slam me to hell. If he's got some physical problems, we could just bring him back as a, as a uh, as a, as a, like a novelty act from time to time. But come on, man, yeah. he, he would be the, the the grammar Nazi. Just think about yeah. that, and we would get him. We would get him in 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 a leotard version of an SS uniform. Yeah. And he will yeah, he will wrestle that. all the wrestlers with bad grammar. Yeah. Like right off this so, is Son so of the, Havoc I, guy. <laughs> oh god, I love Son of Havoc. Son of Havoc really gets he really grows. Yeah. Like him and his relationship with Ivalice. And then eventually they don't have tag teams in Lucha Underground, they have trios. Because in Mexico in Mexico they have one-on-one uh, -on -one matches, and then they have tag team matches, and then they have trios matches, which are three people wrestling against three other people. Yeah. Bella, you almost hit the baby. Be careful. So, and so Lucha Underground eventually has a trios championship. 
Yeah. And, uh, it, yeah, Son of Havoc is freaking amazing. Son of Havoc quickly becomes a fan favorite in Lucha Underground. You wouldn't expect it because he's a dick, but yeah. he quickly becomes a fan favorite. Yeah, it, really, really good. So my fifth and final step for gringos who want to watch Lucha Underground, the fifth and final step is the most important one. Suspension of disbelief. This yeah. is the hardest... Oh, this is the hardest part of selling someone on Lucha Underground. You will be forced to believe in monsters and dragons and supernatural beings. There is a literal dragon who wrestles in this. Yes, there is a literal dragon. His name is Drago. He is an actual dragon and he wrestles. You're, you're going to have to believe in supernatural power and ancient warring tribes and a man from space who may or may not travel through time. But this is the best part of Lucha Underground. <laughs> WWE is constantly trying to convince its viewers that wrestling is real. Mm -hmm. WWE is going, oh, our dumb fans, we're going to do this, and they'll totally believe that it's not scripted. If we do this, they'll also think that that's real. And then if we do this, Lucha Underground knows its fans. Lucha Underground says, hey, we all know that wrestling is fake. Then fuck it, let's have some fun with it. Uh -huh. Let's give this evil dark master and he cripples people as a sacrifice to him. I mean, what the hell? This is just fun. In Lucha Underground, wrestlers die. <laughs> they kill off. They kill off wrestlers in Lucha Underground. Yeah. The first time I had that happen, I'm like, did that wrestler die? They killed off that wrestler. Can they do that? Yes, they can, because this is not wrestling. It's Lucha Underground. That's very important to remember. Yeah. And, and, and because of the suspicion of, of disbelief, Lucha Underground just ends up being so much more fun. Yeah. Watching the WWE is homework. You've got you have to sit through three hours of SmackDown. It, no, two hours of Raw, three hours of SmackDown. Then there's every goddamn pay per view. Lucha Underground is just fun. It brings yeah. the fun back in rest. And that is so that is dragon, always here's a, that is always what kind of grabs me initially with wrestling and I'll pick it up again is that they have some kind of an interesting story going on and as soon as that sort of story arc knocks back or gets boring and they ran it too long and shit like that then I kind of stop watching wrestling again so I, I, I really think Lucha Underground is going to be wrestling for me because it's so it's just got it's just got such a weird vibe to it. You yep. know, because it is so dramatic. I mean, Christ almighty, these could literally be scenes from like Dynasty. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's, it's like a Mexican it's like if you got Supernatural the TV show and you made yeah. a Mexican version of it, it would look an awful lot like Lucha Underground. I haven't noticed music, but I can like almost hear the score because it's all full of this. It's just like Dynasty, where it would be like, da -da, and there would be a, and there would be a facial cut. I'm trying to get it's a facial cut, and then there's an extreme close-up. You know, yeah. I mean that's the vibe Lucha Underground has that that makes it fun. Yeah, you know, but I, I, but it's it's really got to develop because you know. Yeah. Another yeah. another hard part about watching Lucha Underground though is like almost all of the announcing is geared toward Lucha Underground is great. Yeah. And I know they got to promote themselves. I mean, I'm not really knocking them for it, but it's like. Oh. <laughs> You know, the amazing Blue Demon Dynasty, you know, Chavo Guerrera, you know what I mean? It's it's all it's all selling Lucha Underground. Yeah. You know, yeah. we we've got the sons of the best wrestlers. Yeah. But but that's that's it. There you have it. A Gringo's Guide to the World of Lucha Underground. It's on Netflix now, so you have no excuse. It's people. 
it's a fun watch. I haven't gotten into the wrestling yet much, you know? Like when I start when they start when they start wrestling, I'm starting to phase out, so I haven't like spotted anything that except when the midget wrestled, I watched that. Yeah, the 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 first really good match that I remember, I believe is at the end of the third episode. And that's when they get like the three guys and they wrestle together against them each other. So yeah. it's like a Pentagon Jr. who becomes huge. And uh, I think Phoenix. Phoenix. Yes! And then somebody else. I don't remember who the other one is. It... No, no, no. It's, it's three guys from Mexico that they bring in. And they have a, a, they have a three-way match. And that one's really good. Yeah, uh, in the beginning, the matches are, are a bit jokey but eventually the, it, it really picks up the, yeah. the match quality picks up and be more lucha libre and it's, it's really 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 good and they're trying to build the drama as quick as they can you know so these guys yeah. rush in and these guys you know trying to introduce everybody and trying to get alliances going and things like that yeah yeah but it's, so, it's fun. It's, so, a, it's a fun one. Again, I, I, I love the boss. I love... I, he, he's, a, he's amazing. You know, he's like... He's, he's almost he's got, a, got a Scarface quality. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Hi, Eleanor. How you doing? Do you want to chime in? Do you want to say anything to me or say anything to the podcast? Do you want to say Dada or Mama or Burlap Sack first Full of Kittens or Mambo Dog Face in the Banana Patch? Do you want to, do you have anything you want to say? No? Eleanor, say Dada. Say Dada. Can you say Dada? No? Any, she chokes up when she's on the podcast. She chokes up. She's not sure what to say. Yeah. It's okay, Eleanor. <laughs> a professional podcaster like me. And you. Yeah, and Bella. We're both professional podcasters. Oh, yeah. So, everyone needs to go and watch Lucha Underground. Watch it a billion times. Give it time to grow. And remember, it's a TV show. It's not wrestling. Damn, damn good. And, and it, it quickly, you give it a couple episodes, and it really does build its own mythology. It's impressive. Yeah. It's impressive, the questions that it has. 